Canadian police have been using pepper spray and stun grenades in an attempt to end the trucker protests that have been going on for more than three weeks now. The Freedom Convoy movement began as a demonstration against COVID-19 restrictions and vaccine mandates. Earlier this week, the Canadian government invoked emergency powers and cut off the protesters' funding. I'm joined now by Fraser Myers, who's the deputy editor of Spike. Fraser, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I know you've spoken a lot about this and you have some strong feelings about it. Uh, for a start, do you think the Canadian government are going a little bit too far? I think that's a bit of an understatement, yes. This is a really extraordinary authoritarian move. Now, we've seen a lot of authoritarianism, authoritarianism in the past few years, but we have to remind ourselves that this is a peaceful protest we're talking about. Right. It's disruptive, yes, absolutely. Many protests are. Um, and the police had actually been dealing with some of the worst disruption before Trudeau invoked these emergency powers. So... There were truckers blocking the Ambassador Bridge between Canada and America. Really important you know, kind of trade route. Um, the police had actually cleared that the day before Trudeau invoked his emergency powers. And these are kind of wartime powers, essentially. Yes. Um, similar powers have only ever been used in terrorist hostage situation. Do you want to explain to people what precisely they've done in, in terms of invoking these powers and why? Yeah, so... So essentially, uh, Trudeau invoked invoke something called the Emergency Act. Right. Um, it's not been used in its current form before, but his father, when he was prime minister, used a similar law to deal with a hostage situation of um, Canadian separatist terrorists in okay. Quebec. Right. Um, and what this law has allowed Trudeau to do is essentially to find protesters or to arrest them on site, to freeze people's bank accounts or yep. to allow banks to freeze people, uh, people's accounts without um, any court orders or state interference. And it's even relatives of protesters are having their funds cut off and things like that. So it's, it's a really extreme escalation, way beyond normal okay. policing of protests. Now, the, the, the government would say to counter that, well, they would say, but we're dealing with fascists here. Mm. We're dealing with the far right, with transphobes and homophobes and Islamophobes. I believe those are some of the phobes that Justin Trudeau <laughs> Through, yeah. through at the truckers. Is he right? Uh, no, he isn't. And, and he exposed those insults for what they often are now. You know, those are now just sort of signifiers that this person is someone I don't agree with. Right. I mean, there's nothing, the, the protests have nothing to do with trans issues or race issues, but it is telling that those have been invoked by Trudeau. Those have been invoked by the media who support Trudeau. So they, um, there's been the general impression that these people are somehow backward, reactionary, and have a whole set of other views that are unrelated to the protests. I think the they've protests. found some examples of protests. Yeah, there, have been, have there absolutely have been. There have been um, a small number of um, essentially flags with swastikas and, you know, some Confederate flags. A tiny number, but this has been blown out of all proportion. Yeah. You know, the vast majority of people are waving the Canadian flag. So this is, this is actually a, a real problem for... for I think all sides of the political spectrum, because mm. whenever you have a mass protest, there's always going to be some bad apples who yeah. hook onto it in an effort to hijack it. And by focusing there on them and sort of smearing the entire peaceful protest as though that's all it is, doesn't that sort of doesn't that have ramifications for any future protest for whatever we want to protest? A absolutely, it does. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, a, a protest about mandatory vaccinations is going to attract some anti vaxxers That's, that's yeah. a given. But to say it lightly that they are therefore or everyone else who participates in the protest is a racist, is a misogynist, far-right, anti-black, uh, whatever, the, whatever the case may be, yeah. um, essentially demonises anyone who protests against the government, anyone who is not one of us, yes. essentially. And, and it's really important to understand that those kinds of insults, that dismissal of those people has laid the groundwork to legitimise this crackdown. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what's made it possible. That's why, what's made it acceptable in the eyes of, unfortunately, some Canadians and in the eyes of, of much of the West as well. I think, I mean, a lot of people in Canada are sort of saying, yeah, but you're not there and you don't understand how inconvenient yeah. this is and how much noise they're making, how mm. disruptive this is. Now, we've seen over here, a lot of people, of course, will have seen the Insulate Britain protest yeah. or Extinction Rebellion protest, and they will say, look, People were prevented from getting to hospital when they needed treatment. Isn't the same thing happening in Canada? And if it is, shouldn't the government intervene? Well, there has to be a kind of proportionate um, response. You know, the right to protest is not as absolute in the same way that freedom of speech is. You can't have carte blanche to disrupt things. You can't have carte blanche to vandalise property or things like that. And, you know, once in the past people understood that sometimes it was worth getting arrested for those things. Civil sure. disobedience... You know, there was a, it was understood there was a kind of a contract that you'd, you'd be prepared to be arrested for those things because you understood the importance of breaking unjust laws. Yes. Um, so anyone who says there should be an absolute free-for-all on protest is wrong, um, which I think is kind of what some of the arguments around Extinction Rebellion were saying. 
But um, in Canada, we have to recognise that this has gone a lot further than uh, normal policing, than on police moving on uh, disruptive vehicles and things like that. And it's gone into something much darker and much more authoritarian, where people are essentially, you know, having their livelihoods threatened and curtailed because of their opinions. And why is it that this is... I mean, I have to say, like, when I see the footage online and I, hear, I have people saying to me, oh, there's all, they're causing all this violence, mm. all these truckers, and the most I've seen is people on a few bouncy castles or something <laughs> like that. Can't yeah. find the footage of the violence. Um, am I just not going to the right sources? No, I think, I think we can all recall uh, in 2020 during the kind of Black Lives Matter summer where, you know, there were obviously a mixture of um, peaceful protests and some riots and you'd have the reporter from CNN standing in front of the flaming building yeah. saying these are, you know, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. In Canada, that was a, have, a work of genius, it, by it the way. It's brilliant. In Canada, yeah. you have the exact opposite of that, where you have reporters being sent out to report on bouncy castles and, um, you know, uh, soup kitchens and hot tubs as well. There's been, a, you know, lots of people yeah. sitting in a hot tub. And then the commentary over, over the top of it of saying that this is insurrection by air horn, Canada is under <laughs> siege, uh, you know, this is a violent fascist coup uh, yeah. taking place in front of our eyes. So what does this do to our trust in the media? Though? And both of those examples are good. I mean, yeah. you know, I, th I support peaceful protest no matter if I agree with the movement or not. But once it crosses the line into criminality, I do have a problem with it. Now, when the Black Lives Matter protests, the, 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 the protests that did turn violent, mm. I think it's a straight, it's a no-brainer. You just say, well, we condemn that, whether yeah. we agree with it or not, we condemn it. Uh, but that didn't happen. The media sort of tried to twist it and say, oh, well, even when they're, you know, burning buildings down, they're, do they're burning them down in a peaceful way, yeah. you know. And, and then similarly with this, now they're saying these people are basically the second coming of Adolf Hitler, and they're just sitting around sharing soup. Yeah, I, th I think that everyone now is going to have, um, if they haven't already, you know, sort of noticed this or started thinking this, that they're not going to get um, the unvarnished facts. They're right. gonna, they're always, the media is always going to give their spin on it. Now, that's always been the case to a certain extent, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, would criticise Fox News in America for being particularly egregious on the right, and, yes. you know, perhaps CNN and NBC being the opposite... Um, on the liberal side but increasingly we're seeing that kind of spin being put on from newscasters that are supposed to be independent of right, politics right. so it's been egregious to see in Canada the CBC their equivalent of the BBC you know has put out articles saying that um, freedom the word freedom is now a far right trope yes I've seen that one which is crazy <laughs> our own BBC which is again supposed to be politically neutral Somehow, I'm reading their report on the truckers, and it says a woman told how she was afraid about her trans child. Suddenly, inserting again this this trans issue into which has nothing where, to do with it. Which has nothing to do with it. So I, I don't even know if these journalists notice that they're doing it. Frankly, it's, really, I, I think it's almost second nature to them to see a blue collar worker or someone you know who doesn't look like them and think, well. They're probably reactionary, probably far right, probably racist, you know. We had the same in France, didn't we, with the Gilets Jaunes? Exactly. It was exactly the same thing with the Gilets Jaunes. They're arguing over um, a fuel tax. It be then becomes a kind of, that becomes a spur for a much bigger movement around uh, democracy, around uh, inequality, against mm. inequality. And the immediate response is to say, oh, they must be racist, or they're funded by Putin is another, you know, Oh, that's a common one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in Canada, interestingly, the... People seem to be saying it's funded by Trump or Trump supporters in the, in the US is, is the attack line. There's a weird so obsession with on slightly. There's an obsession with who, who's funding this. Yeah. Yeah, I've been accused of being funded by Putin a fair few times. <laughs> I think everyone, everyone has. You know, you know you're, you're a dangerous man out very, to destabilise the West. Very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. What does this do to Justin Trudeau now? I mean, because there are some people who are sort of saying, look, he can't really come back from this, can he? Or can he? Because I think a lot of Canadians, Canadians are actually sick of the truckers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say, really. I think um, a lot of people recognise it as an overreach. Um, a lot of people don't support the disruption, mm. but there's a lot of polling evidence to suggest that now uh, a majority of Canadians want to get rid of you know, most of the COVID restrictions, which is, a, which is a change, a positive change, probably resulting from these protests, from yeah. having this uh, debate. As for Trudeau, I mean, we shouldn't overstate his popularity anyway. He lost the popular vote in the last two Canadian elections. Yes. So, he, you know, he's in charge of a, min of a minority administration. So maybe a lot of can Canadians didn't like him that much anyway. Whether that's enough, that, whether that means anyone will coalesce around an alternative is always the question you have to ask in these situations.